Assalamu alaikum all. Can you hear my voice? What about others? Yes, what about others? Are you with me? Okay. So, today we will discuss chapter number 9, that is Network Management Tools, Systems and Engineering. This is in week 7, but uh, this chapter is quite big, so we have instructions to start it from this week onwards. So, so far we were discussing about SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. We have covered SNMP standards for IP network management. We have discussed about protocols and uh, bases, that is MIB, Management Information Base. Now in this chapter, what we will, uh, we will discuss, we will discuss the tools and techniques that can be used for the management of networks using SNMP, that is Simple Network Management Protocol and also other management protocols. So as you all know that we have some system utilities for management and a significant amount of network management can be done using operating system. Uh, yes, Latifa, any news about study guide? See, regarding a study guide, as I have told you, we are still waiting for uh, feedback from other instructors. And Alhamdulillah, we have received positive feedback from them. Most of them have said yes, but final decision has not been made. Once it will be made, I will inform you. Don't worry. OK? So let's hope for the best because most of the instructors, they are in favor of a study guide. Inshallah, inshallah, uh, you will get good news. So we have system utilities for management and a significant amount of network management can be done using operating system utilities. And there are some freely downloadable SNMP tools. So these can be put together using simple scripting languages such as Perl. And we will discuss some of the basic tools. Now, as you can see over here, we have some basic network software tools. So these uh, tools are basically either a part of operating system or they are available as add-on applications that help in obtaining network parameters or they help in the diagnosis of network problems. So we will describe some of the most popular ones. And there we have three categories of basic tools of network management. They are status monitoring tools, traffic monitoring tools, and route monitoring tools. So we have network status tools, as you can see here in this table. This table lists some of the network status monitoring tools that are available in Linux or Unix operating system and for Microsoft Windows XP and Vista environments. So we will use Linux and Unix interchangeably as same set of basic utilities and tools are available on both. So this also applies to Solaris. We have Sun Solaris systems. We have HP systems, AIX, Mac operating systems, and free BSD systems. So here you can see we have first command. This command name is ipconfig. And the command ipconfig on a Unix system is used to assign an address to a network interface or to configure network interface parameters. 
So usually one needs to be a super user in Unix to set interface parameters. It can be used without options by any user to obtain the current configuration of the local system or of a remote system. And in this and other commands, you can invoke man command name to obtain the manual page of a command in a Unix system. So an example of IP config is shown in this table and it is used with Unix operating system and it obtains and configures networking interface parameters and status. Now, Here you can see we have IP config command. Now generally we used to give IP config and then we give space and then minus A as you can see in this example IP config then minus A. So the option minus A is for displaying all interfaces and there are two interfaces. The loopback interface that is LO0. This is loopback interface and the Ethernet interface. This is called HME0. This is Ethernet interface. So option minus A basically provides information on whether the interface is up or down. What maximum transmission unit it has. So it is measured in MTU. That is maximum transmission unit and the Ethernet interface address. So one of the most basic tool is ping. As you can see over here, we have ping. Ping stands for Packet Internet Gropper. Let me write it down. So a frequent use of it is when an execution of a command on a remote station fails. So as one of the first diagnostics, what we do, we want to ensure that the connection exists. So for this, the ping utility is executed to the remote host. So if it fails, then there is a problem with the link. If it passes, then the trouble is with either the application or with something else. So it is based on ICMP eco request message and is available in both Unix and Microsoft Windows operating systems. So pinging a remote IP address verifies that the destination node and the intermediate nodes have live connectivity and provides the round trip delay time. So by pinging multiple times, we can obtain the average time delay as well as percentage loss of packets, which is a measure of throughput. Throughput is number of jobs executed per unit time. So this feature can be used to check the performance of connection. And there are numerous implementation of ping. And you can read it from the manual for a specific implementation on each host. Now next we have NSLOOKUP.
So the Unix command nslookup host and dig. This is host and dig. They are useful for obtaining names and addresses on hosts and domain name servers. A domain name server provides the series of locating IP addresses. The nslookup tool is an interactive program for making queries to the domain name server for translating the host name to the IP address and vice versa. So the command by default sends the query to the local domain name server. But any other server can also be specified. So the command dig is a more powerful replacement for nslookup. Now if you see this example, This example, this one. Here what we have, we have a command that is dig and then we have Nimbus, this one, dot tnet, dot res, dot in on the host called Beluga. This is the host Beluga. And this is the result that is generated. So the host Peluga basically obtained the IP address of Nimbus. Dot tnet dot res dot in. What's the IP address? The IP address is 203.199.255.4 and this is from the domain name server and what is the IP of that DNS? It is 203.199.255.3 So this information is given in the first line of the output that is called a record. This is the a record. The authority for this information that is the name server for the domain is given in subsequent NS records. The name server that responded to this query is given in the comments at the end. Now instead of host name, the IP address could also be used as the option parameter in the dig command. For example, the command dig plus short minus x 203.199.255.5 will return the information that this IP address is assigned to lantena.tnet.res.in example and it can give very good output. The options plus no comments and plus short are used to suppress this. So dig or nslookup can help when one wants to find all the host on a local area network and this can be done using a broadcast ping on local area network and we need to know the IP address to execute this command. However, if we know a host name on the local area network then we could obtain the IP address using nslookup.
So the interactive command host can also be used. To get the host name using the domain name server. Now with the appropriate security privilege, it can be used to get all the host names maintained by a domain name server. So the dig and host utilities also provide additional data on the host beside host name. Now we have network traffic monitoring tools. This table lists some of the traffic monitoring tools. Now one of the tools is ping. which we have already mentioned as a status monitoring tool in the previous table. So as we have stated earlier that by repeatedly executing ping with a large repeat count, suppose we give ping then minus C then 100 and measuring how many of these were successfully received back, we can calculate the percentage of packet loss. So packet loss basically is a measure of throughput and it displays zero packet loss when five packets were transmitted and received. So it also shows the round trip packet transmission time. Now another useful tool that is based on ping is called Bing, B-I-N-G. This is a point-to-point -point bandwidth ping. The Bing utility basically determines the raw throughput of a link by calculating the difference in round-trip times for different packet sizes from each end of the link. So for example, if we want to measure the throughput of a hop or to point-to-point -to -point link between suppose L1 and L2, now we derive it from the results of measurements of ICMP, ECO, request to L1 and L2. So the difference between the two results will yield the throughput of the link, that is L1 minus L2. So this method has the advantage of yielding accurate results even though the path to the link L1 to L2 from the measuring station could have a lower bandwidth. So it measures the point-to-point -point bandwidth of a link and the operating system that we are using is Unix operating system. However, there is a practical limit to it that is about 30 times. In practice, this means if that if you have a 64 kilobits per second connection to the internet, so the maximum throughput of the link you can measure is 2 megabits per second, 2 Mbps. Now the other commands that examine the packets that traverse the network to provide different output. These commands are TCP dump, and it's real, and it is also known as wire shark. They put a network interface in a mode and generate an output text file and associate each line with a packet. And that packet contains information on the protocol type, length, source, and destination. So because of the security risk associated with looking at data, the user IT is limited to super user. So an example of the output of Ethereal is you can see in this figure also called Wireshark. So here What happens? Each line shows information about one packet. 
and several packets are address resolution protocol requests, ERP requests. Now in these cases, the source MAC address is shown. For each of reading, the vendor ID of the MAC address is shown in text form and it is followed by 24-bit serial number. So the three lines shows the packets belonging to a single HTTP session over a transmission control protocol connection and they capture the three-way handshake used by TCP to establish the connection. And the first of these packets is a connection request from the IP address is not clear in this figure and to the HTTP port on another server. So the server responds with this SYN sync plus ACK and finally ACK to complete the connection establishment handshake. Because if you remember, transmission control protocol is a connection oriented protocol. So what happens? First of all, the connection is established and the data is transferred and finally the connection is terminated. So for an example of TCP dumb command output, the SNMP get request and get response PDUs were obtained using TCP dump tool. Now the command get ethers discovers all hosts and Ethernet address pairs on local area network segment. It generates ICMP eco request message and it is similar to ping using an IP packet. And the replies are compared with ARP table to determine the Ethernet address of each responding system. Now we have IP trace tool. This tool uses Netmon program in the Unix kernel and produces three types of outputs. The first one is the IP traffic. Second is the host traffic matrix output and abbreviated sampling of a predefined number of packets. Now next we have network routing tools. Here we have three sets of route monitoring tools. The net state tool, ARP, RARP tool and trace route tracer tool. So the net state tool displays the contents of various network related data structures in various formats depending on the option selected. The network related data structures that can be displayed using net state including the routing table, interface statistics, network connection and multicast membership. So the example of routing table obtained using net state is shown in this figure. It shows the ports which are associated with various destinations. NetState is a useful diagnostic tool for troubleshooting. Next we have ARP tool. It displays and modifies the internet to Ethernet address translation tables that is called ARP cache and it is used by ARP. Now some Unix systems provide an additional tool 
for manipulating the contents of Ethernet to Internet Address Translation Table that we call RARP Cache. So the name of the tool is RARP and its use is similar to ARP. Now the third set of routing tools is Trace Route. Now this Trace Route is used with Unix and if we say Tracer, it is used with Windows, Microsoft Windows. And it is the basic tool used most extensively to diagnose the routing problems, routing problems. So the tool basically discovers the route taken by packets from source to destination through each hop. So it is very useful in localizing the source of route failure. It is also useful in performance packet delay evaluation as the result gives the delay time to each node along the route. So this trace route or tracer is based on ICMP time exceeded error report mechanism and when an IP packet is received by a node with a time to live value of zero an ICMP packet is sent to the source. Now when the value is zero, then we call it TTL value. TTL value is time to live value. Now the source sends the first packet with a TTL of zero to its destination. The first node looks at the packet and sends an IPA, ICMP packet since TTL is greater than zero. So the source sends the second packet with a TTL larger than the TTL needed to get to the first node and therefore trace route acquires the second node. So this process continues until all the nodes between the source and destination have been determined. See this, here we have two sample traces taken close to each other in time between the same source and destination. The name is money.btc.gettic.edu. Now we notice significant differences in the route taken, the delay time and the number of hops so we would expect these differences since each packet in an IP network is routed independently and each line shows the router that the packet traversed is sequential. So the three time counts on each line indicates the round trip delay for each router on three attempts made from the source. This is sample 2. Now in sample 2, the second half of the route appears congested, indicating consistent large round trip delays. So we also notice that some of the routers respond with their IP addresses, while the others do not. So the lines that are marked with asterisks are responses from these routers which have been administratively prevented from revealing their identity in their responses. So there are also web-based trace routes and ping utilities which are available in some systems. And the use of these tools significantly decreases the time necessary to detect and isolate a routing problem because the final decision is based on independent data that is obtained from various hosts on the network. Now there are several tools which are available to obtain MIB tree structure as well as its value from a network element. 
So each of these tools have several implementations and we will not go into a specific implementation here but we will describe their functionality. So you can obtain details on the use and options from the manual for, that are being described for each and every tool. So here we have SNMP MIB tools and they are of three types. Now first one is SNMP command line tools. Then we have SNMP MIB browser with graphical interface. And thirdly, we have SNMP SNF, that is Linux, Linux based free BSD based tool. Now, if you will see, SNMP MIB browser, it is a user friendly tool that can be accessed from public software libraries or commercially purchased. So we have MIB2 of SNMP V1 and some can extract SNMP V2 MIB. So some can also acquire private MIB objects. Here we have some SNMP command line tools and these tools are available in Unix or with Linux or free BSD and Windows operating system environments. So command line tools basically generate SNMP messages which are SNMP test. SNMP get, SNMP get next, SNMP set, SNMP trap, SNMP walk and SNMP net state. So the test tool is basically an interactive tool to get the values of several managed objects one at a time. Now SNMP get command basically communicates with the network object using SNMP get request message. The host may be either a host name or an IP address. So if SNMP agent resides on the host with the matching community name, it responds with a get response message returning the value of object ID. Now if we have multiple object IDs and they are requested, so we have a variable called bind, V-A-R-B-I-N-D. And this clause is used to process the message containing multiple object names. So if the get request message is invalid, the get response message contains the appropriate error indication. Now we have SNMP get next command. This command is similar to SNMP get except that it uses SNMP get next request message. So the managed object responds with the expected get res response message on object ID. So this command is useful to get the values of variables in an aggregate object that is in the form of table. Now we have SNMP walk command. SNMP walk command basically uses the get next express messages to get the MIB. And this MIB is basically MIB tree for the group defined by the object ID 
and is specified in the request. So it literally walks through MIB. Now without object ID, the command displays the entire MIB tree supported by the agent. This SNMP set command sends the SNMP set request messages and receives the get response command. SNMP trap command generates a trap message. Some implementation handles only SNMP version 1 traps and other handles SNMP version 1, version 2 and version 3 and can be specified in the argument. Now we have SNMP sniff tools also. And these sniff tools uh, like SNMP sniff is similar to TCP dump tool and is implemented in Linux or free BSD environment. So it captures basically SNMP packets that is going across the segment and it stores them for later analysis. Now here we have protocol analyzer. This protocol analyzer is a powerful and versatile network management tool. And we will consider it as a test tool. And later on we will look at its use as a system management tool. So it is a tool that analyzes data packets on any transmission line, although it could be used for the analysis of any line, its primary use is in the LAN environment, which is what we will focus on. And measurements using the protocol analyzer can be made either locally or it can be done remotely. So the basic configuration used for a protocol analyzer is shown in this figure where we have a protocol analyzer. It also consists of a data capture device that is attached to a LAN. So this could be a specialized tool or it can be a personal computer or it can be a workstation with a network interface card. So the captured data are transmitted to the protocol analyzer via a dial-up modem connection a local or campus network or a wide area network. So the protocol analyzer analyzes the data and it presents it to the user on a user friendly interface. Now here we have an Armon probe. We have already studied about Armon, that is Remote Network Monitoring System. This figure we have discussed where we have a backbone network. It can be any backbone network. It can be an FDDI network or any other network. We have a protocol analyzer. We have an Armon probe and the LAN is connected to this Armon probe. So the data is gathered and it is stored for an extended period of time and it can be analyzed later. And it is used for gathering the traffic statistics and used for the configuration management for performance. We have also discussed this figure. If you remember, this is a network monitoring with Armon Pro. We have a local Ethernet. We have a token ring local area network. We have a backbone network. For the token ring LAN, we have a token ring probe. For backbone network, we have a backbone probe. For FDDI LAN, we have FDDI probe. And for Ethernet LAN, we have Ethernet probe. So in this figure, we have four probes each for each network. And 
we have a protocol analyzer also and all of them are connected via routers and sometimes switches are also used to connect them. So this is the monitoring of total networks with individual Armon probes. Now in our face-to-face -face lecture, inshallah, we will discuss the network statistics. This is all we have discussed. This is slide number. We have discussed until slide number 30. We have discussed up until slide number 30. Inshallah, in our face-to-face -face lecture next week, we will start from slide number 31. So all of you, please go through these slides again. And if you have any question, you can raise in face-to-face -face lecture. That's all for today. See you in next lecture, inshallah. Till then, take care, all of you. Assalamu alaikum.